I went through the archives to see what I could come up with that we could look at this month. Uh, something, you know, um, informative for our viewers. Back to the Amateur Logic Warehouse. Back to the Amateur Logic Warehouse. And this is what I came up with. Hi class, I'm Professor Thomas and the name of this course is Better Living Through Chemistry. Today, we're gonna to take a look at some of the chemicals you need in your shop. Of course, you need to occasionally clean things, so you're gonna need some good chemicals for that. Here's one right here that I use quite often. It's Amazing H2O. It's a multi-purpose cleaner, it's non-abrasive, and it's biodegradable. This stuff right here, you should have around because you need to wet that sponge for your soldering iron, and there's a lot of times that a little bit of water would help. If you don't have a sink in your shop, definitely get you some H2O. Another cleaner I use quite often is Formula 409. This stuff cuts really good. It's sort of a degreaser, so it will take off a greasy residue, oil, and such, and it's good for a lot of different things. You might also want to have some Windex around because 409 won't clean everything. Of course, electronics get dusty, so you want to have a can of this dust remover. It's uh, compressed air, or actually, I think it's compressed carbon dioxide, but that's really good for cleaning out stuff. You can also turn it upside down and you've got a free spray there that's good for troubleshooting purposes. Here's one that I use a lot, denatured alcohol. You can't drink this stuff, but it really is good for cleaning flux off PC boards, uh, grease, just a variety of different uses. You really should have some denatured alcohol hanging around in your shop. One other chemical I use quite often is Power Wash. Now, there's a bunch of different brands of this. It used to be Freon based. I'm not sure what they make it out of now. This is just a general contact cleaner, no lubricant in it, strictly a cleaner, and it's sort of a degreaser too. This is good for cleaning switches and contacts, connectors, you know, whatever you've got that's gotten kind of dirty and is making static. Try some Power Wash or something similar to it. This stuff's not as cheap as it used to be, but if you use it sparingly, it can last you a long time. Now, here's one other item that I use a lot. It's Deoxit D5. Now, this stuff has been around for quite a while now. It's made by Keg Laboratories. There's several different names to it. Originally, it was called Cremelin. Uh, then it was named Deoxit. I think today it's called Pro Gold. But this is a contact cleaner. And it also applies a conductive lubricant when you put it on something. So in a lot of cases, it'll help rejuvenate contacts on switches or potentiometers and such. Highly recommended here. Deoxid or Pro Gold. This stuff is also available in a solid form. This is Cremelin Copper Paste here. Uh, I'm not sure what they call it today, but it's like a lubricating paste there that has copper particles in it. It's good for contact cleaning, and it also leaves a lubricant that's conductive. Uh, you might use this for heavier duty contacts, things that are, are pretty high current and will be moving a lot. It's also good to put on battery terminals. While we're looking at stuff in baby food jars, let me just bring this out here. This is Cool Amp Silver Plating Powder. It's actually a, just a little white powder in there that you can take and rub on copper or on brass, use a lot of force and uh, a good bit of time doing it, but it will actually put a silver plate on certain metals. Now let's move on over into lubricants. Of course, this is three-in-one motor oil. It's just what I happen to have. You could have regular three-in-one oil around. That stuff's good too. Another lubricant that I use quite often is a spray-on silicon lubricant. This stuff is great for uh, a variety of uses. Door hinges, uh, cabinets, sliding mechanisms, a lot of good uses. And this stuff doesn't leave a residue like oil, so it's very helpful. Now, they also make a silicon grease, and I've had trouble finding this in recent years, but I finally found a source. You can get this stuff at the auto parts store. There's a variety of different types of it. Some of it's used as a spark plug boot sealant, but look around for silicon grease at the parts store. 
This stuff is good for putting in barons that are a little bit worn, uh, mechanical sliders, uh, a lot of different things where you actually can use a little grease on it. Very good. Sometimes things break and we need glue and uh, various different types of compounds to fix that with. Here's one of my favorites right here. This is 3M Super Weather Strip Adhesive. It is sort of like contact cement, but really strong. It holds for a long time. It also is, um, I've used it as an insulator material before. Very good stuff. Definitely get some of that for your shop. Another type of insulation that uh, you can use is liquid electric tape. I really haven't used this stuff until the past couple of years. And uh, it's pretty nice. It's expensive, but it does do a really good job of insulating. What I would do is probably take some electric tape, put it over my connection first, and then cover it with liquid electric tape. Now here's another type of popular glue here, super glue. I've got some here, but I really don't use this stuff much. You know, you open the tube, use it once, and then it's pretty much hard as a rock. Uh, this is good for some things. I try to avoid it, but, you know, there's some stuff that that's really the only thing that's going to work right for it. One more here that I like. This is Quick Steel. It's an epoxy stick here that you cut off a little bit. You take it and you knead it together, and it really makes a strong glue. Uh, this is probably sort of like JB Weld. I haven't used that particular brand myself, but this is what I've used in the past, and I've fixed a variety of things with it. Here's another glue I like right here. It's Elmer's Ultimate Glue. It works for metal, wood, stone, and a lot more. Uh, it's a polyurethane-based, I believe, but really good glue there that you might want to check out. Sometimes glue won't quite do it for you, and that's why I like PlastiPair. This stuff was kind of hard to find. It's made by Ron Chemicals. Pay attention to the way it's spelled here, Plastipair, P-A-I-R. It really works great for uh, fixing plastic parts. We'll use some of this one day and actually show it in use. There's uh, some white powder in here. You mix that with some of the liquid, uh, stir it up, and it makes just like a little uh, sort of uh, pliable plastic that you can use to repair plastic parts with or make your own plastic parts. Plastipair. Highly recommended. Now, as long as we're talking about glue, here's one that uh, you may not need, but if you work with paper and uh, various materials sometime, foil, uh, you can even use this on uh, plastic or metal. It's 3M Super 77 Spray Adhesive. Uh, this is good for a lot of different things. One thing I've used it for is, well, like my Raspberry Pi case here I made. I printed out my label, and then I sprayed the rear of it with some of this uh, Super 77. And I was able to apply that decal right here to my Raspberry Pi case. Now, to keep that thing looking fresh for a long time, you know, the white paper is going to get dirty when you put your hands on it and such. Here's something that uh, I like to have around here. This is a clear wood finish satin. It's actually a spray on lacquer, and that's good for uh, covering things like this. You could use it on a PC board if uh, it was gonna be out in the elements and you needed to protect it. This would just put a little clear spray over whatever you're working with, and it's convenient to have sometimes. Now we're talking about protecting things, well, you know, there's a lot of different things that need protecting. And one of the things I like to use here, this is OxGuard. This is used for dissimilar metals. Like, uh, say, you've got a copper terminal somewhere and you're connecting an aluminum wire with it or vice versa. You know, eventually that thing's going to oxidize and you're going to have a corroded connection there. It's not going to work very good. You can take a little bit of this stuff here. This is OxGuard. I think there's another one called NoOx. It's just a uh, black paste here. Take that and you cover your wire and your connector with it and then screw it together and you're not gonna have corrosion on it. 
Let's talk a little bit about soldering stuff. Now, of course, you know, you want soldering. I prefer to let it solder myself, but the unleaded stuff does work. There's a couple other things you might want to have, though. This is solder paste. I bought this little box, I don't know, several years ago now, and you can see I've hardly used any out of it. Uh, you want to get something like a uh, rosin based or an electronic paste. Be careful of the stuff you buy at the hardware store because it's probably acid based and that'll eat up your electronics. You can apply this stuff on wires or connectors or metal that might be a little hard to get started soldering, something that's large. This will allow the solder to flow much faster and you can keep the heat off of that component and probably get a better connection in the long run. You can also get liquid flux and here's some in a little flux pen right here. This is made by Kester. You can take this pen and you just brush it on the PC board or whatever you're working on. It really gets that solder flowing good. Here's some Wright's Anti-Tarnish Silver Polish. Uh, you could use Brasso if you want, but you know, it's kind of handy to have some little polish around sometime. If you've got a piece of metal that's dull, you can use this stuff right here to brighten it back up. It also can be used on plastic or other materials, so having a little polish handy could be a good thing. Well, thanks for joining us for Better Living Through Chemistry. We hope you got a few tips here that'll be useful in your shop.